Well, howdy, nerds. I'm Tom. I'm Wes. And I'm Aaron. We're doing this. <laughs> we're doing it. Country accents all the way. Fried horns, here we go. Yeah! Today, we're meandering our way down the Mississippi, delivering goods down to New Orleans. You guys just brought it out. Hell yeah. All right. Broadhorns is basically a pick up and deliver, like trade, uh, Euro style. Yeah, game where you're you're gonna be picking up resources, you're gonna buy them at one price and try and kind of press your luck going down the the river and you know try and sell them before they spoil because uh, some some of the resources spoil other things like the the whiskey and the the fur won't so like some things you can carry longer and sell them but that's if you can get to a port and sell it before somebody else sells it there yeah that, that's, that's it that, that's <laughs> pretty much it you're just moving down the river and that's the main thing is that it's like it's it's obviously it's one way down the river so once you pass a city once you pass opportunity you can't really go back because in order to end your expedition you like kind of explode your ship and then start back over. Sorry, your ship is your, your broad horn. That's, what the, that's why it's called that. So, and to call it pick up and deliver is kind of accurate and kind of also not. It's more focused on the trade. Like pick up and deliver feels like you get an awful lot of different missions and you're trying to complete the different missions. There is one aspect in that in that you know, while you're buying and selling and trading all these different goods along the river, there's also these cards that you're drawing that could give you different incentivizations, one of which is travelers. Mm -hmm. And that feels like a more real pick up and deliver because you do pick them up at one stop mm -hmm. and try and drop them off at another stop. The buying and selling along the river is less traditional pick up and delivery because you don't have to bring things to one specific place, you just mm -hmm. incentivized areas. However, there are certain cities that only buy certain goods and certain cities that only produce certain goods. So like way down at the end of the river, you get a lot of money for your wheat or your little white barrels, but no one down there makes wheat. And so if you pass the city that makes wheat, you're like, oh, well now like, I'm never going to get this big money because I, I missed picking it up back there. But there's, there's kind of always something you can do because mm -hmm. even if a city doesn't buy a good can, can, you can sell it for yeah, one you can, coin. You can know, sell it for one, yeah. That's kind it, of like you can a, always sell something, so it's not... It's like the last ditch effort. You don't really have an excuse for things spoiling. Like, you could try to press your luck to get, like, oh, I'm going to get there, I'm going to get there, mm -hmm. and then a spoil card comes up, so you can't quite math it out right. But mm -hmm. for the most part, once things are getting close, you're just going to dump it for one coin instead of nothing. True. And I mean, I do, to go back to what I was saying earlier, I do think pick up and deliver is the best example, is the best, you know, term to use for it. It's just not 100% traditional pick up and deliver. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want people to get, no, no, it's not. Yeah, it's not like there's resources sitting here that you just go and get. Like, they actually have to, well, I mean, they're, they are always available. Because you can always buy them straight from the bag. Yeah. They're just the but they're really chain. expensive to buy that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like Wes said, in, 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 every city only offers certain resources, so you can't, you know, if you go to this, you know, you're here at Cape no, I'm not going to do that one. You're at New Madrid, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're like, oh, I'd like to buy some wheat, but they only, bu they buy wheat, they don't sell wheat, so you're going to sell your wheat and then buy whiskey or buy furs, and, you know, there's these, what are these tokens called? They're, they're, they're just city, 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 city tiles. City, yeah. city tiles that, once they fill up, you take them, um, and they're, they got these little, reefs. they look like horseshoes, but they're reefs. And you're going to uh, hold on to them, they give you points kind of at the end, but after you take that, uh, the actual values of the resources that you're buying there kind of change. So you never even, you can't be sure about how much you're going to spend somewhere because you have to buy after you sell. And if you sell everything to, to like get the bonus there, then you may not actually be able to buy at the price you thought you were going to buy them at. Mm -hmm. But granted, yeah. since you just sold, you probably have enough money to buy it kind of at whatever price it is. It just kind of <laughs> sucks if it's one more than you thought it was going to be. And yeah, I do think that the selling and getting those wreaths is pretty powerful because at the end, first, at least well, in a three-player game, it's different number of plays you play, but by having the most wreaths, you get a bonus. That bonus was 15 points. Set, or 12, I think it was 12, and then the other one was 6 or it's something. It's significant. It's yeah. significant, and the wreaths are kind of random on mm -hmm. the tiles. Right, so like ranging from one to three at yeah. the cities, because like there's a one right here, and the next one's two. So yeah. there's, I think there is a, just a decent amount of RNG in here with what you draw with the barrels, with what tile is where, how many wreaths you get, 
and all that kind of, what cards you draw. I think my favorite thing about this game is the changing seasons. Yeah. Because it's what makes this game most thematic. And there's definitely thematics in it, and that you're sailing down the river, and the farther you get from the main port and the newer cities, like, the more expensive resources are, but the more you can sell them for. So, like, that's pretty cool, and your bigger boats travel slower, but they can carry more, more stuff. But the seasons is what really adds the thematics and that like in winter all the boats have to move slower but nothing's going to spoil in the winter because it's cold in the spring you get to move faster because all the ice caps are melting and the river's flowing faster and the summer things spoil more and not only the thematics of it but the fact that that's the countdown for the game is how many barrels so every time you fill up a city by selling all the resource one of each resource they take or all their little resource circles yeah you put one barrel on there so you can kind of if you want the game to go by fasting because you're taking the lead, you're going to want to just try to be filling up cities as much as you can to get that track moving or maybe get you out of winter so you can move down as fast as you want. Or you may go, no, I'm not going to fill it up. I'm just going to sell one here and one there and two here just to kind of slow the game down and give you a chance to catch up. And the problem with that, though, is the, if you just put a couple barrels there and there's like one or two spots left that'll complete the card. Somebody else can come and complete that card and get that bonus mm -hmm. and kind of you know, steal it from you. Mm -hmm. So like the bigger bonuses and the more you know, money you get is further down the river, which makes sense. But then you're also thinking, you're like, dang, it's more detrimental for me to leave an open spot in New Orleans than it is for me to leave a, a spot in Chickasaw Bluffs. <laughs> I have no idea. That's another big thing is I have no idea. I don't, I don't live here. I don't know any of these places or any, if any of them are still there. Or these were just early, early, early trade settlements. settlements, you know? But yeah, like, Cash, that one literally looks like Kashyyyk. Like, <laughs> but all, but That's I mean, where the Wookiees live. Not even like I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'll draw a card and I'll say, ooh, you get... Uh, bonuses if you deliver to this city or this traveler wants to get to this city and I'm like every time I'm like oh, where is that you know I wish kind of there was like a little map or something on the card well, whenever kinda it like has a, a ticket to ride where they yeah, have oh, where you're trying mini, to find like, it like, yeah it's like playing ticket to, I mean if you live in Louisiana this game's gonna be so much better for you there's only 10 spots so I guess it's not that big of a deal but still it was a little annoying like especially when I feel like this isn't common knowledge you know what I mean like <laughs> But then again, granted, I did think that Ticket to Ride, like just knowing the map of America, should be common knowledge. But but like when they do, um, what was the game we the one that's like Pandemic, but it's uh, medieval Defenders of the Realm? Yeah. How like all those cities? It's like, look, this is a made up place. Yeah. Please tell me where that stuff is, and don't d assume that I know where your made up city is. Now, this isn't made up, but it's still like just as much non common knowledge as that's mm -hmm. stuff is. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Definitely, definitely time to get off that point. <laughs> I think the fluctuating market in this game is one of my favorite things. It's, it's very interesting to have, you know, there's 10 resources here, and depending on how abundant they are, that's how cheap they are. So, like, the more there are, the cheaper they are because they're trying to, you know, it's like they're on sale, like, let's get rid of them. Because there were some points where, like, I was like, oh, man, I really want to buy ham, but there's none there. All the ham's gone. Oh, no. <laughs> that ham shortage is 2018. <laughs> I want to make hot ham water. <laughs> it's, it's so smack watery. Of ham to and it. a distinct smack of ham. If yeah, you I know would... what that reference is, put it in the comments. Also, have you seen season five yet? There was definitely a point where I would be just buying the cheapest things just because they're abundant. I'm like, oh, it only cost me one coin plus one, so two coins to get it. Or, you know, it's a plus zero, so I'm definitely going to buy it. You know, it did come to, you know, how much I could fit in my boat was kind of the biggest... Um, restriction like you know that's when i'd be kicking myself like i wish i would have bought the biggest boat because right now there's like all this stuff that i could buy really cheap and just like drift down the river and sell it for a bunch and i mean that's what the name of this game is you're trying to make as much money as you can so buy cheap sell high but you got to get there before your stuff spoils so tom mentioned earlier that there's a lot of rng in this game mm -hmm. and that's probably one of my bigger negatives to it is that it can so much come down to luck. And it's a game that I really wanted to be strategic in. Like, okay, I can move six spaces, let me pick this up here, and I double move here, and I can get to there, and when I get to here, I can sell. And it's like, I, I wanted to really math it out because of how like mathematical the movement is and the spoiling is. But it's really in like the bonus cards that come up and stuff. Like, okay, one, the market fills up. Or like, okay, I just need to buy an apple and I can fulfill New Orleans. That's my plan is to buy an apple by the time I get down there. <laughs> and then like apples are at four the whole time. And like I never see an apple that just keeps being whiskey and 
wheat and all this stuff. And I'm like, there's never any apples. And then like I pass it and all the apples come out. I'm like, girl. Or what happened to me a lot is like with the travelers, where like I'd be like at the second city, and all of my cards, if I I'd start drawing, were travelers that I have to pick up at the first city. And I'm like, well, these cards are all worthless. So there, there was a lot of that going on in the game. There's a little bit of backstabbing and that like, oh, I'm going to get to this city first and sell it before you can. But I, I didn't really think we got into a lot of that. There wasn't, that, there wasn't that much player interaction. Yeah. Like, that. what you just said is the extent of the player interaction. But, but even that it was, it didn't really happen a lot. One, like, the stars had to line up. And then that, like, backstabbing then had to be better than what you were going to do anyway. And, like, if I saw you were going for a city, I was mostly just like, well, I'm going to plan to do something else because you're probably going to get there first. Yeah. Um, but my biggest negative was that I feel that the thematics of just lazily drifting down the Mississippi were too strong. And that I just spent a lot of time just like, I'm just going to move. <sighs> it's a nice day out today, isn't it? <laughs> like, there just, there wasn't enough happening for me. And maybe it'd be a good light game, a good like intro into kind of Euroway games, because there wasn't a lot of complexity. I think it'd be easy for younger players to pick up. But especially if you're like a big game, a big time gamer or a big gamer, you know, whatever, <laughs> this might not be the best game for you. There was a lot of downtime between turns too, because there's that lack of player interaction. Like, especially you're waiting around for it to come to your turn, and then it's your turn, and all you do is triple move, and that's it. Like, I, I'm gonna go Chick Fil A. <laughs> like, I'll be I, back. I know, right? Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, my other complaint that I do want to have is, well, I do want, I do, I do have is the component quality. It's actually really good in some areas, but not so great in other areas. Like, look, this first player token is dope, but first player doesn't move around, so it's less necessary. But it's still, it's an awesome piece to put up there. The tiles are nice and thick. The art looks pretty good. But what I get from a lot of people is, we actually don't even have a whiskey barrel out here, is that the white barrels and the brown barrels I don't know why I've even poured them out. You can't see them from there. So they look, the two different browns, the dark brown and the light brown. The light brown and the white, a lot of people were saying, especially if we are in insufficient light, which we're not right now, that those seem really close and it's hard to tell the difference. And I can definitely, that's an issue. Well, especially if you only have one on your boat. And right. then, like, I would pull up to a port like, okay, I'm going to sell my wheat. Like, oh, oh, wait, that's not wheat. That's whiskey. Dang it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that can be a pretty big issue. And also, this is the most... Nitpicky of all things, but this bag is not a good bag. Bags are supposed to have a string go in, wrap around, and then string comes out. This is just kind of... So look, if I grab it like this, it flops out way easier than it should. That should be like a pull. This is like a just, it can flop out, and then these things flop out. It's happened a couple of times. Those criticisms aside, though, I still feel like I just... I agree with Wes. I, this game just kind of missed the mark for me. It was just okay. Maybe even a little less than okay. It was kind of boring sometimes like I got it I get what we're trying to do there were some times on my turn when I was having a little bit of fun I was like okay so I'm gonna do this ooh and sometimes like ooh if I had done this last turn I would have more money now to do this okay but I don't really care you but, I, I mean? but I played again like I'm not gonna be like oh no don't play that but like uh, I might be a little bit less than you I, I don't know right. really, maybe it's just old age I'm just getting to the point where like I don't really know if I care to play it again Aaron what do you think about it I would play this again. Um, All right. Maybe it's just because, <laughs> but is it, is it like a, I would play it again? Or like, no, I, I enjoyed it. Like, I think I enjoyed it because I crushed you two. Sure. <laughs> That's true. Oh, All right. He did. He did crush us, <laughs> which is not unlike you, yeah, to be honest. It, <clears throat> I really enjoyed um, the just the, the trade interaction. Interaction not between you guys, but me and the board and going like, okay, I'm going to take this and I can drop it up at this port or this port or this port. And, you know, just depending on what you guys did, I would kind of, like, maybe change my strategy. But I kind of, like, you know, press my luck and, you know, go for things and, you know, just try and sell, you know, sell at least two goods at a, at a, at a port so that I get the bonus. 
you know, just make as much money, money as I could. I definitely did rely a little bit on luck. Like I, I did get a handful of really good cards that like very unlike you. Yeah, <laughs> that I would, I would, you know, spend to like move a little faster or sell things for more. Getting the travelers at the right time instead of like what Wes said, like if you get them after you pass the port would kind of suck. Um, that's why you just gotta, you know, hope for the best, I guess, and you know, uh, hope it. The one thing that was cool about Traveler, so if you did pick them up and you couldn't use them, you discard them, they go to that city, so you can get them on your next go around. You can pick them up, or maybe somebody else will pick them up. Yeah, but, all the Travelers that I can't use, Aaron can just sweep in yeah, behind yeah. me. <laughs> right, right. Now, I, I see what you're saying. Like, I don't think it's a bad game per se. Like, you know, again, we've played really bad games that we've been like, oh my god. It's just like, you know, it. Standing on its own, I think it's fine, but when you start comparing it to what do I want to play this, do I want to play this versus the other games that are same length, same complexity, same whatever, even I think, like, this is just not Rio Grande's, like, strongest hit. Like, they, I mean, because they did Dominion and Power Grid and Roll for the Galaxy and Race for the Galaxy. I think they have a lot of other, like, just better, more interesting games. I feel like they just kind of missed the mark with this one. And not to say that, like, again... Okay, it's not saying like I will never play it again, but I'm just like, do I really need to like if we're gonna if we're gonna choose a game, am I gonna choose this or am I gonna choose another game that no. similar complexity? I even I even want to see like checks and different strategies of I've heard some people that like if you never go below halfway through the board and you just always like pick up deliver blow up pick up deliver blow up because every time you sink your ship you as long as you keep the cheapest ship you're actually making money on that so like just selling off your ship for parts starting over again like, i've heard that you can get into a little like cyclical thing there where plus you, you're like, getting a bunch of these tiles yeah so i've price. heard really good points there but i've also heard if you can stock up and make it all the way down the river like you're making a lot more points but it's taking a little bit longer where are you hearing these things the internet oh uh, yeah uh. So, I mean, there are things I want to check out more. I definitely, I, I'll probably play it again at some point. I'm probably not going to choose to play it. But if somebody's like, oh, that looks interesting, let's check it out. I definitely wouldn't, like, shy away from it, even though it wouldn't be my first choice. Well, you know, it's hard to recommend that you pick up a copy after we give it a semi lukewarm But if you agree with Aaron mostly in our videos, we'll put a purchase link to this game in the description box down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never be bored. <laughs> <laughs> well, howdy, nerds! What's up? <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it! Okay, I'm doing it. You young whippersnappers! Nah, I think we should do it. I think we should do it. Ham. 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 I'd like all the ham, please. And then I ran away and laughed. <laughs> yeah. Pat <laughs> Oswald. Yeah. That is obscure! <laughs> Can I have all the ham? Oh my god! <laughs> We have to get there before he commits ham death or something. That's great. Oh, we'll send it to you. We'll send it to you. All right. Okay. Uh, he, doesn't know any, he has no idea what it is. I know who Patton Oswalt is. It's just he had a stand-up comedian bit about all that. About him. I figured. <laughs>